I'm thankful that all of you have come from across the world to be with us in New Orleans to celebrate a city that has hosted more Super Bowls than any other city except for Miami. And hopefully we'll continue to host many more. And I know that many of you that are here today are to write about something that is the focus of your life every day. You're all sports writers. Some of you write about bigger things than that and you are forgiven for having a tendency to focus on the field. Because it is a big sports event, it's the granddaddy of them all, 120 million people will watch it. But there are moments like these that I think help us all put into perspective the reflection that that is just a game. And the game is wrapped around life and life stories. I know you like to tell stories about where people have come from and where they've gone. The story of the two coaches who are brothers playing against each other. That building is just a space around which lives are lived uh, and the lessons of life are learned and the metaphors for a much bigger and important story. And so I'm just really grateful to be here for this moment to settle down a little bit and to talk about things that really matter in life and quite frankly the relationship to what happens on that field and why it's significant in so many different ways. We wouldn't be here if James and Mary had not stepped up uh, and said yes. I thank you for that. Lieutenant Governor has been great. Uh, Chase has been a wonderful partner for the city of New Orleans for many, many, many years. They, it didn't just begin with Katrina and Rita, but since that time that I helped us stand back uh, up with $30 million of investments to a bunch of different entities. And uh, so Lois and uh, Jamie Diamond, who was here not long ago, and John Callen, born in Lizette, Greg Rattler's in the backs. Katie, thank you guys so much for your commitment to us. Uh, and, to, and to Scott, this is a story that goes untold. A lot of friends in this circumstance would walk away. Too busy, got a wife and kid, really can't stay around. I'm playing in a different city. But there's something special sitting right here that makes this story um, even more compelling. Stephen is a, a person who I think reminds us that there are human beings in this world that we need because they inspire all of us to greatness. I, uh, I can tell you that you know everybody has complications and difficulties uh, in their life. But it's hard to find another story of uh, a young man who for so many reasons, uh, as he said and he admitted to you, I should have quit, should have stopped would have been forgiven for saying, you know, this is too hard, uh, and I just kind of want to hang my hat up and let be what's going to be. And he said something to us today that I hope rings in your ears, that even though that's what most people do, it wasn't okay with him. That that's not really the way it had to be. And I think it should remind all of us that it is, in fact, uh, individuals that change the world. It's not systems that change individuals. It's people who, uh, in the darkest of hours, just decide that the way it is is not the right way to be and that they have the power uh, to change the world. So what I love about this story, besides having the blessing of getting to know Stephen and Michelle and now Rivers, beautiful, your greatest gift, by the way, no matter how this turns out, <laughs> with the technology, right? And to Paul and to Jill. By the way, they have the best steakhouse in America. In case y'all looking for a good one. <laughs> Is how Katrina brought us together. And I want to do a minute of a deep dive on this because I'm not really sure that, and there would be no reason for you to fully appreciate the beauty and the elegance of this moment and how the story of how New Orleans came back is really a story of people and the soul of the people manifest so beautifully uh, in the spirit of Steve, have joined together to find friends where they didn't exist, did things that they never thought they would do, to fight all of the odds and said it's not okay, we don't believe you when you say we can't come back, and how one person's act led to another person's insistence on doing more and then bringing people together to forge what has now become a New Orleans. So this Super Bowl, for example, is really just a piece of 
a much larger story. Of course, we do hospitality better than anybody in the world. We've been working at it harder and longer than anybody. But you should venture out to see the city of New Orleans and what is happening right now. And this is a manifestation of probably the most exciting hub for entrepreneurship in America. And he's a perfect example of that. We're building a $2 billion healthcare delivery industry because we're transforming the city of New Orleans into a knowledge-based economy that respects tourism, but also knows that we have to be uh, other things. Four of the largest ports in the world, less than 50 feet uh, away from us on that river. The ability to really transform a people from where they have been to where they want to go. But the people of New Orleans would have been forgiven after Katrina, after being 15 feet underwater, after losing everything. Everybody lost everything. Not some people lost something, they lost everything. They lost their houses. In some instances, we lost our mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters. We lost our doctors, we lost our homes, we lost, our, we lost everything. And people here would have been forgiven for saying enough is enough, it's time to go, but they did not. And they were looking for inspiration. They were looking for community. They were looking for leadership. And on that beautiful day, when Steve and his spirit decided that it wasn't okay for us to keep losing, and he found whatever it is he found to do what he did on that football field, I am telling you as a citizen of New Orleans, the spirits of the people soared. And they said, you know what? At that moment, we transformed ourselves from losers to winners. And that singular act which may be the best play. I don't know how you did it before or after that. But it <laughs> that play. <laughs> that play transformed the attitude of the city. And from that moment, that sports moment, the people of New Orleans in that game said, you know what? We've been in the darkness. And now we're moving to light. And the city found courage. And it found itself again. Luther Vandross has a song that he sings, where he says, a house is not a home. Now the people of New Orleans know this very well because we lost all of our physical structures as Steve is losing his. But that's not really where the strength comes from. It comes from your spirit, it comes from your soul. It comes from the fortitude to find, when you dig down deep, the courage to say, how it is is not good enough. And what he has done since that time is continue to reflect to the people of New Orleans why it's not okay for them to quit. Why there's a better tomorrow. Why it's impossible to say that we can't get where you want to go. And he's doing it personally by showing, if I can do what I'm doing, certainly you can do what you're doing. Yes, it's tough to build a house. Yes, it's tough to rebuild the school. Yes, it's tough to get the Republicans and the Democrats together to find common ground so that we can actually talk about what the future is. But it can't possibly be harder than this. And if this is possible, manifest in this singular human being, then anything in America is possible. And that's why this story is so compelling. And as you see up here, what he has done is he has passed football and left it behind and used what is above and in front of him that is singularly and exponentially greater than anything that might have happened on that field. And he is an inspiration to me, he's an inspiration to the people of the city of New Orleans. And I don't know about you, but when I watched this just a moment ago, how can anybody in this room at this moment believe that the work that he is not doing is going to be life-changing not only for him, but for most of America? And you can imagine how it falls on his ears when people say, we're in tough times. We have to do more with less. Folks just have to kind of get through. When in fact, all we have to do is create partnerships, private sector, public sector, chase, bringing the city together, linking up, asking people to believe, doing the things that they can do well, and then consequently giving him the strength to continue to do it. So you see, it becomes a virtual cycle of inspiration that moves the people of New Orleans back to understand and know that if you follow his spirit, that there is no place that we cannot go. And so, Stephen, I don't know if you fully appreciate what you have done for us. But remember, he didn't start with a big stadium. He didn't start with technology. He didn't start with Chase Manhattan. He didn't start with politics. He started with what he found in here, where he was driven to do something bigger and better because he was thinking not about himself but other people. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the ingredient that moves New Orleans from being the worst to the best and produces individuals like this that in turn drive all of us 
to that great place where we all know we can be. So Steve, God bless you, and thank you very much.